And as I begin the second part of my khutbah, my dear brothers and sisters, I want to share with you another beautiful story. This is the story of a man who was originally Egyptian, but he lives in the beautiful city of Al Madinah Al Munawwara. And he has made Hajj for the last 20 years in a row, every single year. And he was doing an interview recently, and he was asked, You as a janitor, as a poor man, what do you think is the cause that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps calling you back to his house? So in this interview, the man says, this is purely from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not sure of the exact reason, but I do remember a particular incident in my very first Hajj that I saved up for the whole entire year before I came for my first Hajj. And I went on this great journey. And as I'm on a bus on my way to Mecca, I see this old woman who is old in age, big in size, struggling to walk with her cane. And you can see that she is in an immense amount of pain. So I thought to myself, what type of individual would I be if I as a young man sat on the bus and this old woman had to walk all the way to Mecca. So while we were stuck in traffic, I got off the bus and I went to this woman and I said, Oh my dear mother, I ask you by Allah that please take my seat and I will walk in your place instead. And this woman, she started to cry with tears, thanking Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent someone that would take her on the bus rather than her having to walk. And as she was getting on the bus, she turns around to that man and she, is, oh, she says, Oh my dear son, I pray to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never prevents you from making hajj again. And he says, Allah knows best, but I believe that was the cause that each and every single year, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends someone knocking on my door that requests my help in going for hajj. Or they request my company. Or they say, I want to take you to hajj for free. And each and every single year for the last 20 years, this is what has happened. My dear brothers and sisters, when we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to remember that nothing is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was thrown into the fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the fire to be cool and peaceful. Maryam, the mother of Isa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted her a miraculous birth, even though it was not humanly or physically possible. Isa alayhi salam was born speaking in his cradle. Yunus alayhi salam was devoured whole by a whale and taken to the bottom of the ocean. And when he called out to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there to protect him and grant him that which he desires. My dear brothers and sisters, that is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ That if you were to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shy to turn our hands away empty-handed. Rather, we are the ones that fall deficient. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this great blessing, yet we do not take advantage of it. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not get angry when we keep asking for the things that we want and desire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes angry when we don't ask of Him, when we think of ourselves self-sufficient. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this act of dua as our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is our way of conversing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why it is the one of the most beloved acts of worship.